I'm looking in all sorts of habitats to find different kinds of reptiles and amphibians. Places like this creek offer aquatic animals refuge. I started to search for reptiles and amphibians in this open field that had a lot of things to flip. The first snake I found was this eastern garter snake. Unfortunately, it was gone before I could get a good look at it. Next, I found another eastern garter snake. This snake clearly did not appreciate me picking it up. Garter snakes are aggressive if handled and will spray musk to discourage any potential predators. Alongside the garter snakes, I spotted the spring peeper in the grass. Finding one without the cross markings on the back is uncommon. Spring peepers are normally one of the first frogs to come out of brumation and can be recognized by their calls that sound like peeping. Next, I was able to find another eastern garter snake. The name garter is often confused with garden, but it's supposed to describe the snake's stripes. The last amphibian I found at the field was a spotted salamander I flipped underneath a log. These salamanders can live in fields as long as the soil remains moist throughout the year. Spotted salamanders have toxins they secrete from their glands on the tail and back. To find more reptiles and amphibians, I went to explore a creek. At first, I flipped a rock where I found this northern two-lined salamander. These salamanders mainly hunt small insects they find living near streams. Snakes, fish, and birds commonly hunt two-lined salamanders. Even though it was getting cold, I still managed to observe this northern water snake. These snakes give birth to live young in August to October. Patterning and a lot of the colors are lost when northern water snakes mature. Additionally, in order to catch slippery prey, these snakes have very sharp teeth. Alongside the banks of the creek, there were quite a few northern green frogs. These frogs used to be commonly known as screaming frogs because they make a loud noise when getting away from predators. Northern green frogs aren't necessarily green, sometimes having a brown, black, or gray back. Green frogs enjoy many different permanent aquatic habitats, including the creek I found them in. I continued to find other reptiles and amphibians by heading to a forest. On the way, I noticed this wood frog. They aren't always red and can be often observed to be a lighter orange or gray. Wood frogs spend their time in the woodlands digging themselves underground when it gets too cold or dry. Arriving at the forest, I found a northern black racer. Racers dive into underground holes when threatened and will bite if picked up. These snakes are completely harmless, but their bites can still create bloody wounds. Even though their scientific name suggests that black racers kill their prey through constriction, they don't. I continued to look for animals and managed to find two pickerel frogs. The orange coloration on their legs indicate the toxin they produce through their skin. These frogs also have multiple spots along their back, ordered in rows. Impressively, pickerel frogs are known to call underwater and above water. I was still looking for reptiles and amphibians in the forest when I found this eastern American toad sitting on a rock. These toads can be found all across North America and can be frequently seen at night, since adults are normally nocturnal. Toads like this one are known for their characteristic bumps that resemble warts, yet are completely natural. The last reptile I found was this wood turtle. Wood turtles eat a wide variety of food, including algae and insects. The name wood turtle came from the idea that these turtles looked like they were sculpted, considering the grooves on the carapace. The plastron of the turtle often has varying amounts of cool dark patterns. In a few places, Wood turtles are unfortunately considered to be endangered, making them a species of special concern. After looking at the turtle, I made sure to let it go back into the water where I found it.